All right, so we're taking at a less or taking a look at a lesson that we just did in our Earth Science class, and we are looking at how we get the different phases of the moon. Um, we've got a worksheet, uh, one through eight, and it shows us if we were to observe the night sky every couple of nights, what the moon would look like in succession. So one through four, and then five through eight. I asked the students to take the model of what we have here, our uh, yellow bulb here being the sun, our smaller one being the moon with the light side and the dark side, and the earth with the light side and the dark side. So students are to try and find the arrangement of the earth, moon, and sun in order to create the moon in the order that we see it. The first one, known as a new moon, is a completely shaded out moon. And from the point of view of the earth, we see that in order for us to be able to see that, we need to look from point of view of the earth to the moon, so if we can come around. You can see here that from the point of view standing on top of the earth, we would see a completely shaded moon, known as the new moon. This is a reminder, our club will be starting at 2.40. And then students have to figure out, okay, well, if I want to create the next phase of the moon, which is the waxing crescent, what position or where does that moon have to change or its position has to change in order to create that image? So if we were to just pick an arbitrary angle of up here, again, leaving the light side of the moon to face the sun, and we look at the angle of the earth towards the moon, we can see that here, we do see just a sliver of the moon, and that light is on the left. So we see just that crescent starting to peak out on the left. But when we look here at our diagram, the crescent is on the right. So we've got the right, we've got the, the idea here, but we're not quite right on what side that crescent shows up. So if we move here, kind of the same angle but on the opposite side and we take the angle here of looking from the earth we should see that that crescent starts to emerge just over here on the right side of the moon and we can diagram that here on our worksheet and then we continue well okay where does that moon have to be if we want it to be a half moon and students kind of get this idea well maybe if I move it right here continue in the same direction I get a half moon so if we look from the direction here it doesn't seem to be quite quite half. We're getting closer, but not quite half. So if we move a little more, always the light side facing the sun, and now we take it from this angle here, we see that that half moon starts to emerge. So again, we take, we take a look at our worksheet. We want, we've got more than half, not quite full, and we continue with the same direction. And from the angle that of right here, if we look from the Earth towards the Moon, we see that we get that waxing gibbous where more than half of the Moon is illuminated by the rays of the Sun. And in order to get the full Moon, we just keep with our rotation. And from this angle here, you can see that the Earth, stand this up, facing the Sun, the Earth would see a full Moon. And now from here, we've made a 180 degree rotation or orbit around the Earth. So if we keep going, we go to here, and we see that now the moon is less than full, and we can start seeing that the light is starting to diminish. So the, um, we get what's called a waning gibbous as the light starts to wane and dim down on the moon. And we keep going with that rotation. And Mons, here we would have our half moon. Mons, here you. we would have that waning crescent as the light of the moon is waning. And then we complete our full rotation, which takes about 28, uh, 28 days, which is known as a lunar month. And we return back to the position we started with, which is the new moon. And that's just a quick and easy example of how we get the different phases of the moon.